Ghost Cult Magazine. Welcome to the great Tomas Lindbergh of At The Gates. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, very good. Uh, it's uh, 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit right here. Two fans going to, <laughs> to keep me from dying here. Yes. But it's super uh, nice. Finally, summer has arrived in Sweden as well. There it is. There it is. Summertime in the in the great world. Um, first and foremost, you know, obviously we're going to talk about the uh, Nightmare of Being, the new record from At The Gates and anything else you've been working on. But, you know, it's been such a bananas time in the world with uncertainty and this virus and political unrest and all these things gripping our world. I just like to check in with everybody, make sure you're well, the band is well, your friends, your families, your collaborators, the conspirators, because I've talked to a lot of artists who've lost people and you know, like, hey, let's get in and talk about the record and the death metal. And then they're like, I had no, like, I a lot it. of personal <laughs> tragedy and stuff. So I really hope you you guys are in one piece after all this. <clears throat> yeah, we've been very lucky, me, uh, the family, uh, everybody from the band and and uh, the circle around it, we've been lucky, you know. Re regard, you know, in regards to the grand scheme of things, we have no loved ones lost or whatever. Uh, you know, it's sometimes difficult because you can't see friends that are, you know, from from other parts of the world for for quite some time. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, we 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 have been lucky, really. Well, I'm glad to hear it, and uh, I. Feels like we're starting to come out of it. I know you, uh, America's a little ahead. We were way behind everybody else struggling and suffering. And it seems like we're a little bit ahead now. We have a lot of shows and festivals coming. Slowly, it looks like shows and festivals are coming back to Europe. Um, obviously, as a just first and foremost, as a person who yells into an electric stick for a living, when, when, when will you feel, are you ready to go back on tour? Will you feel comfortable being in front of crowds, small and big? Yeah, I guess, you know, like uh, as soon as I get my second shot, which is a couple of weeks away. Uh, I mean, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but I mean, I do trust science. So, you know, I, I hope everything will be fine then. Of course, it will be feel weird and different uh, going to an airport. You know, what I mean, that, that, that will feel weird. Uh, but in general, of course, we just released a record. We, you know, we want to go out and, and, and play the shows for sure. You know, but we've been in the writing mode for such a long time now, so we haven't really thought about shows until now when the record is being released. That's when you start to feel the itch a little bit, so to say. Nice. It does seem like besides the record, it has been a very productive with the the pandemic notwithstanding. It seems like it's been a very productive and prolific time for the band. Uh, a lot of projects going on outside the band, but also I think the entire, I think the entire arc of the EP before the To Drink from the Night itself was incredible. You did the special shows at Roadburn, toured, released some in very inventive videos, and then this album, which is like a very fitting follow up. Uh, you know, like a more traditional At the Gates record. I love the experimentation though, and I feel like the experimentation carried over into this record. Do you think that's uh, you know accurate and fair? Yeah, I guess because there was no distractions around for quite some time. So, I mean, and this you probably noticed talking to other artists as well. I mean, what else can you do than be creative and, and do a lot of stuff, you know, because we're, you know, we're restless persons. We want to be creative. We want to, you know, go further, explore other stuff. And this has been the time to do that. You know, we, we have much more time on our hands this time around. And I think you can hear that in the songs that they are much more evolved i guess and detailed there's a lot of shit going on that you know basically it's down to that i think a lot you know of course we were more inspired than ever but also the focus and the time was there you know that would be a great uh that would look great on a shirt at the gates there's a lot of shit going on um <laughs> <laughs> yeah the nightmare the nightmare of being there's a lot of shit going on there really is um there's some fantastic stuff in there a lot of layers uh wonderful uh, uh intros instrumental pieces and then like little segues and it really heightens the drama and the dynamics of the heaviness of the record because it is an at the gates record it's brutal all the things you expect riffs your voice great drums great bass everything in place but uh yeah i really really love this one i think people were really waiting for it i was gonna as we said before we began chatting there's a tremendous amount of buzz around this being one of the records of the year like People were waiting for this, maybe Gojira, a couple of other things that people are very excited about. So it's got to feel very gratifying 30 years 
into your career that people are still super hyped for this band. Yeah, it's amazing. It's very rewarding. And we, we are very humble, you know, towards that fact. It's, it's uh, uh, we feel privileged to have such, uh, how can you say it? Like curious, curious uh, listener base. <laughs> we probably, you know, grew that listener base throughout the years ourselves cultivated it <laughs> but but uh, it's great that everybody are so keen and that they are so w- ready and willing to be challenged uh, by the band you know and it seems like the more offbeat stuff on the record is what people really are attracted to with this one as you said for us it's like gives the record dynamics you know it gets, gets it a flow and you go from the different emotions on the different tracks but is, it, is this audible moments that people are like wow shit, this is the best you know like you know that's what they are <laughs> into which i love you know i we were really <laughs> nervous about some parts of the record <laughs> you know but right now we, we're not anymore yeah right on and i think there are some bands that the fans trap the band into a box like okay at the gates is the band that made slaughter of the soul like you can't you know like of course you're always going to be that band but and fans and their expectations you can't like be trapped by them but it happens bands get you know concerned uh and i think what you guys showed on the ep is the willingness to really go out of the box and experiment and everybody dug it like which is cool like we had discussions our team was like, oh, what do you think about this new At The Gates EP back when it came out in 2018? It was like, I, lo- I love the risk taking. Like a lot of bands don't take any risks anymore. Uh, you know, Carcass, I heard their new song is like new, fresh sounding for a band that's also the same amount of longevity as you guys. So, you know, it's really cool to see the uh, like an established band take chances and then can carry, they worked, continue, take, you know, continue taking risks and not settling. And like, you can make a straight up, old school record anytime anybody can do that but like it's cool to take listeners on something new yeah and i think for us the challenge has been been to do that without losing you know what is at the gates you know i think that's been very important for us and to be experimental and you know eclectic and whatever that's kind of easy for us because we'll we dig a lot of different stuff you know we've always done that been king crimson fans since we were like 18 you know what i mean but the difficult part is, which is the fun part as well, is to like still maintain the at the gates core, you know, sound within those new experiments. And like, it's really cool that people, you know, understand it, what, we, what we've been trying to do. Right on. I love King Crimson and I'm so pleased that, you know, at like almost, you know, late 70, whatever years old, Fripp and them are going to go back on tour again. Um, you know, they lost the drummer to cancer during this interim and, uh, but they are going to, they booked a huge tour and they're going to continue to do what they do. Obviously, <clears throat> obviously a different kind of band, but it's no, still I, I, kind I, of amazing to see a band kind of last that long and people still want to come see them and hear, their, hear those, you know, hear those jams again and again. And I'm sure you're excited to get back on the road. Um, I don't recall if you guys have done any little shows in the meantime. No, um, the last shows were right before the pandemic, like in mm. February uh, last year. Then, yeah, um, and uh, since then we haven't been doing anything. We have some shows that are, you know, not yet cancelled or postponed here in Europe. Uh, August, September, October. But then we have already started booking for the, so to say, wheel campaign for the record, starting in uh, December here in Sweden, and then of course going everywhere <laughs> where we are supposed to go. Yeah, I think it's going to open up and uh, we'll get everybody over there, over here to the States and the rest of Europe very soon, I think by early next year. And uh, yeah, I am hopeful. It looks it looks good. I love seeing the enthusiasm of fans to these festivals in America are overflowing with bands. The Hellfest lineup is insane next summer. Yeah. So it's yeah. really great to see this kind of in, you know mass enthusiasm because I was worried. I feel like especially for metal live music is essential to what we do i love records and i will always be a you know a record snob and a vinyl snob but i love live music i haven't seen a show in like 500 days you probably haven't this has been probably i know home life is important to you but this has been probably the longest stretch of time you've been off the road other than the break in a long time yeah definitely i mean it's uh, strange in one way but as i said we had the writing and recording phase anyway which you know usually doesn't encompass any shows anyway. So uh, in one way, we didn't feel it as bad 
as I said, like now, now is when the itch is coming on a little bit, especially, especially with the response of the record, you know. Now it'd be really cool to play some of these songs uh, live, you know, because people are into them. I, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, right on. And so many bangers. Uh, the album has so many uh, great, you know, heavy, heavy tunes that will go beautifully live. Do you have uh, any uh, personal favorites, just either musically or lyrically, that you love? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we haven't done before, as we discussed before. Um, and there are, the, you know, the curveballs like Cosmic Pessimism, Garden of Cyrus and all that. But I think the combination when they come together in a song like The Fall Into Time is something like we have never done that before and never been able to because we haven't had the experience, you know, enough to create something like that. And I'm really proud of that song. That's like a little bit of a cornerstone of the record, like the centerpiece. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, that's fantastic. Very cool to play live. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, uh, yeah, you know, we ha you have this whole history of music to draw on. And I know there's always kind of a funny trope among you know uh writers and photographers it's like oh we're going to the tour they're going to play the same three or four three or four new ones and all the same old ones but i feel like this whole album could be played by itself i feel like you could play anything off this album and i think people will dig it and i i'm i think that even more so than at war with reality like much more so that i'd love to hear all this stuff live yeah and i mean it's, it's uh, always hard when you get further down the career to like you know choose the songs from the uh, from the older albums there's a certain few songs we can't get away with not playing you know what i mean <laughs> but i think we will be um feel like you know pumped up from playing these new songs so the old songs will get an, another burst of energy into them as well i guess you know right on considering there hasn't been a lot of live shows what do you do to just keep your vocals in shape because you sound great on the album and you know, very well noted for your prowess as a vocalist in this band and your other projects. So what do you do? Do you just, do you practice? Have you practiced routinely during this time? Uh, you said you've been writing all the time. So clearly- you Yeah, I mean, so. we, uh, we have, I, I have recorded three albums during the, during the pandemic, uh, Lurking Fear and Lock Up has been recorded. So of course I had to like prepare for that. So that kept me on my toes a little bit and also, uh, like real rehearsals, so to say, we've been rehearsing with this fear quite a lot uh, during the during the pandemic as well. So that kept me up to date with what I'm supposed to do, you know, um, and also trying to stay in shape as much as possible. Of course, there's been some pandemic pounds added, but I'm going to the gym all the time to keep myself in shape. That also helps for the vocals. You know? Nice, of course. Yeah, I feel like back when you were here in the States on the Amon Amar tour, Martin was also talking about side projects and, you know, things coming, they were in the work, you know, the planning stages. So it's cool to hear that they might be closer now uh, on, on uh, Disfear and Lurking, you know, things like that. That would be fantastic. Yeah, the, the Lurking album and the Lock Up album is coming out later this year already. So <laughs> it can't really, I can't really sit still, you know what I mean? I have to right. get going all the time. Nor should you, or then we have atrophy. So uh, yeah, very excited about Lockup as well. Uh, I actually, I think I saw one of your first American shows with Lockup, so I'm really stoked for that to come back as well. And I, I'm at, like I said, I imagine coming into next year, there'll be some big tours and you guys will get over here and play some tours and festivals in America as well as the rest of Europe. And uh, yeah, it's, it looks like it's coming back. I'm being cautiously optimistic that we don't screw it up as a group, the whole human race. And this record seems very concerned with like the end, the end point. Like, it, you know, we're on a course and we're not correcting. And I feel like that's, I don't know if I'm overreaching, but I feel like that's kind of the theme of the record. Existence is always hard, but we make it harder. Yeah, I guess it's like the centered around the human, the struggle of the human soul and the human consciousness basically. And uh, the awareness of uh, our mortality driving us slowly <laughs> to our own grave and uh, uh, there's some, some influence from uh, pessimist uh, philosophy on the record um, which is weirdly enough strengthening for me at least you know and uh, of course I never buy a whole philosophy you know as a whole I, I take the bits that I like but there's some really cool stuff in there that you know made me realize we can live our lives fuller and richer, uh, you know, by embracing our fears and, and, you know, the suffering and all that. Right on. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's funny. Um, 
metal lyrics don't get enough credit for being thoughtful and, and well-read metal lyricists and metal writer and, you know, bands being well-read and thoughtful and sensitive because it's metal and we're supposed to be crazy and evil and sick and twisted. But, you know, like also I think as we all get older, you know, I, I, this is my, uh, you know, like 40th year as a heavy metal fan and I'm older than that. And it's probably the same close for you. So, you know, it's like, I gravitate to smart things. I like smart albums. I like some just straight up ignorant shit in hardcore. And I like some <laughs> gory death metal, you know, like I, the new aborted record will be awesome. And, you know, Sven always writes about like, you know, chainsawing apart people and I love that shit. But also like, I like a smart album that like, you know, this appeals to me, my personal demographic as a, yeah, as a yeah, person, yeah. where I am in my life. I think this album is gonna grab some fans and be like, check this out. Here's something else you haven't thought about. So I like, I always like records that make me think a little. Yeah, for us, it's more like also, we need that little bit of challenge to get started, you know, and I need that to, to write lyrics. I'm as, the same as you, I enjoy the uh, more intellectual lyrics when I listen, but I also enjoy the normal <laughs> death metal lyrics as well, but I can't really write it, you know, other people do that better. I, I can write the more tricky, weird stuff, you know? Right on. Beside your, your music that you make, what have you been listening to? Anything in particular that's been carrying you or in the playlist lately? Well, through the pandemic, it's been um, it's been a lot of jazz here, actually. Uh, jazz and some like, you know, weird uh, world music as, you know, Afrobeat, stuff like that. I'm, you know, kept uh, busy challenging myself with new music. Of course, I've been listening to, you know, the classic, death metal hardcore stuff as well but when i really wanted to like go into something else go into a different world uh see what this is about try to learn something new then that's where i've been reaching there's been a lot of uh, a lot of coltrane for example right on i love coltrane uh i've been doing a lot of miles also and uh, yeah giant steps is always a big one i go back to personally my parents were good yeah. jazz heads i'm sure you you grow up in that generation too where like that stuff is indelible and uh, and you actually, I like, I hear a lot of, it's funny, I hear a lot of like progressive metal bands today borrowing from like bebop and, you know, like sort of new wave jazz, which is really interesting. And uh, yeah, that's a great record. I will recommend to you a record that I love that I like to chill out with. Uh, Clifford Brown died very young. He's a very unsung trumpeter. Plus he came up at the same time as Miles, but uh, yeah. he, has, he has many great albums and you should check out Clifford Brown. Yeah, he, um, I got recommended him by, uh, by someone else as well just recently. So yeah, 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 I think I actually did a playlist that I, you know, on the will check out part of the Spotify. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm glad I'm not alone in that. Um, just as we uh, start to head to the end here, because I know you have other calls to do more, another another couple hundred interviews to do probably still what, until we get <laughs> on the road, um, as you said. Uh, you know, I think about like the 30th anniversary of the band and the first split release uh, with Grotesque and, uh, you know, could, if you could go back in time and talk to young Tomas, what would you say to yourself at the start of your music career? Uh, I would probably tell the guy, no, I wouldn't. I, in one way, I would tell the guy to be patient, you know, you'll be doing, you'll be doing this for 30 years. So, you know, things will happen. Don't worry. Uh, but at the same time, if I told him that, maybe I wouldn't be where I am today because I was that young, uh, how can you say, like naive uh, <laughs> uh, person. That person needed to do those records, you know. Uh, so I, I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy where I where I ended up, and I probably wouldn't have ended up here if it wasn't for that person. Uh, a lot of fantastic things have happened to me and the band. But I wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't necessarily want that person to know that yet. <laughs> you know, it has it, that person has to go for the struggles, the van tours, and you know all that shit. Cool. The life experience is needed, and it's the same thing even now. I'm sure just the life between albums. I what I think about all the great art we are probably yet to get because of this latest period of human history that is going to inform the next period of human history. So that's really cool. I know you like I mentioned Roadburn earlier. You've already done kind of the nostalgic uh, full album playthroughs and full EP playthroughs of the first couple of releases. Next year will be the 30th anniversary of The Red in the Sky is Ours. I know they've been re-released already. I would love to see another vinyl release of that since I don't have one, um, <clears throat> Century Media. And um, 
help us out. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any, uh, obviously it's early and you still need to go promote this brand new album, but it would be nice. I don't know if you guys have any plans to do another tour where you do a whole performance or a full album, but I'm curious. Well, uh, the, the, the main problem there is that, you know, we, when Slaughter of Soul turned 25 uh, in, uh, what is it? Yeah, one year ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we we actually had some shows booked for that, you know, like special anniversary shows, which we haven't done yet. They, but they are postponed, and we are contracted to play to play sort of a soul on those shows. So those shows will still happen, like celebrating the twenty seventh anniversary of that record. So, yeah, in, in one way, it would be cool to also honor the Red in the Sky is ours. But I, I, if it's possible to squeeze it in, maybe do something special. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll just have to wait until uh, with Free Our Case of Burning Darkness turns 30. <laughs> That's also, yeah, just right around the corner. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled to hear the slaughter shows are still going to happen. I'd love to see it happen here or something special, uh, you know, at a big, uh, one of the more special festivals or special experiences. But, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with being a little nostalgic, and I appreciate you guys. But this brand new record is so killer, and I'm so pleased to chat with you about it. Um, thank you for hanging out with those Cole Thomas. You've always been a supporter of us and we, we, you, thank you so much for, uh, just being you and doing your thing. Stay well, and we'll see you out there soon, as soon as possible. Definitely, man. Thank you. And thank you very much for the interview.